What's going on YouTube? It's Pelfrey. And I made a dumb, dumb mistake. <laughs> We've all done it. We've all made stupid mistakes. I filled up, these are two Ace Roto Mode 40 gallon containers. So I hold 80 gallons of RODY, RODI water at any given time. I don't mix salt in them. They're just RODI water. So I filled them up uh, recently and you know it takes my, my RODI units a Spectra Pure 90 gallon per day so it takes you know a day plus to fill these up. I thought to myself you know it's my wife has gone out to eat with her sister so I said I'm going to turn this valve on low and fill up this 10 gallon container and then I'm going to come out here and just shut it off. Well I got to playing with the kids and whatnot and kind of got busy and I forgot all about it. And I ran out here and I was like, there's no way that I've filled this up yet. Well, not only have I filled it up, it's overflowed and run out the garage door, but I've used, you know, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, almost 30 gallons of water wasted, completely wasted out the garage door all over these decorations. You know, by the time you're seeing this video, Halloween has come and gone, Thanksgiving's come and gone, but there's water everywhere. And it's okay, it's in the garage, so it's gonna slowly go out. And that's why I have these out here in the garage, because if something like this happens, I don't have to worry about it. Now, the thing is, is I've now gotta get some of this water out of here without making a mess, and I'm gonna make a mess, to move it over here, so that I can start heating it up for a water change. So, dumb mistake. I should have, <laughs> I won't make this mistake again because it cost me almost 30 gallons of RLDI water, but you know what? It is what it is. It's in the garage. It doesn't do any damage. I mean, some of this stuff got wet, but all this stuff over here, it's all right. It's in totes, it's pumpkins, it's some cardboard, yada, yada, yada. But hey, we all make mistakes. We all make mistakes. Whether it's in reefing or just in life in general, we all make mistakes. And if this is my only concern for the evening, then I have no worries. So I decided, you can see I've dumped some water. I decided I would pick it up from its location and carry it and it was filled to the rim. And it's not very warm. I'm out here in shorts, no t-shirt, no nothing. It's not very warm. So I backed the van out, got the wife's car there, the Rev4, all Toyotas in our family. But <laughs> I got, you know, it did make a mess. You know, this is the stock Red Sea Reefer Sump. <coughs> it's wet. It's actually got water in it. So I'm gonna have to take this out, dump it out. There's water everywhere. There is water everywhere, but again, it's in the garage. So no harm, no foul. Wife's golf clubs, the bottom of the case got probably a little wet. It's all good. But everything else, nah, it's all right. You know, it'll, it'll survive. So that's why I didn't care about picking the brute up and moving it that way. So I'm gonna throw a heater in here, get some water moving in there, get the water warmed up because the concrete, well, it says 58, it feels a lot colder. And this is 51, 52. So it's cold, it's really cold. So yeah, I'm gonna have to pull this sump out, move these pumpkins, pull this sump out, dump the water out, put it back and get the van back in the garage before the wife gets home. There's water all over this, oh man. Got the van moved back into the garage and I'm just gonna pull the, this is what I run from my laundry room, which is right there. I just run it under the door, up along here, up along there, and then I fill up the container. So I'm just gonna fill this one up again. It sucks, you know. Not only did I waste damn near 30 gallons of water, but you gotta think about the wastewater. <laughs> I mean, like the, the Spectra Pure unit is I think a two to one ratio, something like that. But nonetheless, I, not only did I waste RODI water, but I wasted wastewater. And I really hate to be wasteful with anything, anything. So, oh well, oh well. So I got the CJ 1.0 or 1.5, 1.5 in here, Eheim heater. Temp probe, which it says right now the water is 51.4, and my set temperature is 80 degrees, which this is the new Inkbird temperature controller, which Inkbird sent me. So 
Um, this is the one that BRS uh, sells with their new heaters. And this thing is awesome. And I have the ITC 608T and it's, it's an awesome heater controller, um, but this one is even better. It's got two ports for heaters and the 608T does heating and cooling, but this is a smaller compact unit. So stay tuned for a video on that at some point. So yeah, I'm gonna make do with what I got. That's about eight-ish gallons right there. And we'll just do a water change. I know I've been talking about water changes a lot here uh, lately, but I have access, semi-access sometimes to a 3D printer. So I printed this nozzle and you can see this is a Triton sump, so it's filthy, but I'm gonna try to vacuum some of that stuff out. There's a bristle worm there, but it's basically got a crud bed. It's not even a sand bed, but I'm curious what's gonna happen whenever I start getting some of this uh, catomorpha into the pump but I'm not even sure that this pump works. So that's gonna be my first thing. So yeah, I got this drawing off Thingiverse and uh, printed it with low quality. And you know, it came out great. Fits on the end of the MJ1200, perfect. This is the only MJ1200 uh, that I have. So um, I'm gonna have to plug it in here in a second and give it a try. So I do have some gloves. And I pulled all the Ketomorph out because I don't want to touch a bristle worm and I'm going to try not to touch a bristle worm, but I'm going to try to get this section cleaned up quite a bit anyway. Feel <laughs> disgust. Look at this water. So this, this did work great, but as I suspected, you know, if there's algae, you know, here, here, so clumps of it would get in here. So I had to take the net to get it out and I was scraping this a little bit. Just trying to clean it up since I've already drained the water out of it. I'm just using an old card. Um, but it's filthy. Absolutely filthy. Um, but it's better. It's better than it was. So I'm going to let that set for a little while after I get it scraped and then add some new water to the tank because I need to add water now. But yeah, look at this. Look how nasty, nasty it is. Scraped clean. Use the brush and the water is probably a little bit filthier. So I did clean out these sections here and over here. And then I got my floss tray by Octo Aquatics floating or sitting in some vinegar and water. And then the magnet will go in there and get it clean. So I wish I had a little bit more water made up. I would go ahead and clean this all the way out, but I think it's pretty good. And I'll maybe work on this next week or I don't know, at some point, but look how dirty this light is. It's filthy, so tanks doing great. No complaints whatsoever. Oh, I did print since I do have, like I said, semi access to a 3D printer. It's hard to see, but I printed a bracket to hold the controller. So I'm gonna make it an objective to try to clean this area up somehow and <laughs> manage it just a little bit better. So I do, that's the smart. Wi-Fi uh, server protector, two tunes uh, controllers, and then I have this where I can turn it on. Oh, by the way, 6055, 6055. So the old 6055 tunes pumps in here now. Uh, whenever I had the 6040s, I loved them. They just weren't enough for this tank. So I got uh, two of the 6055s and I need to get the cable that you can plug into the top of them here and let them run as primary and slave pumps. So. Very, very excited about that. They're awesome pumps. Easy to clean, easy to program, dead silent, pure workhorses. The dust has settled. This is what the refugium looks like now, which it's hard to see because of all the shadows. But you can tell uh, I, cleaned, I cleaned it pretty good. Um, and I like to do it a couple times a year. Pretty satisfied with it. Now this chamber on the other hand, the uh, <clears throat> 3D nozzle would probably work pretty well in this chamber as soon as I get this rock out of here. But I'm thrilled with this. I may have cut back on the Ketomorpha a little bit more than I wanted to, but you know, it is what it is and I'm fine with that. So, you know, I'm gonna keep up on the maintenance on this and get it cleaned up and uh, just make sure I can keep it clean. I have been taking the um, these tubes out and cleaning them, which I noticed just now that the water level is kind of high. So I may need to drop this down just a hair, just to bring the water level in this down just a little bit. Cause it's right at the, the uh, tip of that uh, calc drip right there. But long process, 
very worth it. I like to try to keep things clean and stay on top of things as much as I can. That way it reduces um, all the extra work that I've got to do later on. So yeah, you know, appreciate you following along. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at Pelfrey's Brief. Continue to follow me on this wonderful journey and I'll catch you on the next one.